Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Salatu wa salam Ala Sayyidu Mursuni Nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Allahumma amanna Faktubna ma'a shahideen Wa zidna ilman Wa huda Now we are on the 28th chapter Which is Surah Al-Mujadina And Surah Hadid And was themed at talking about recognizing the oneness of Allah and His Majesty and His names and His attributes as it begins with Subhanallah ma fi samawati wal ard the whole dominion belonging to Allah and He is Aziz al Hakim. His is the mulk of samawati wal ard yuhi wa yumit He gives life and death and He able to do all things wal awal wal akhir wal zahir wal batin and He is istiwa al arsh <coughs> surah. Al Mujadila begins with the same sort of theme. Now, the context of this surah is where there was a man called Aus bin Samit. He divorced his wife in a peculiar way, which was known to the, the Quraysh. And his wife was Khawla bin Thalaba. And they both went to the Prophet to have their issue uh, judged in between. So Allah said, Qad sami Allahu lati Allah has heard. The statement of the woman who is complaining about her husband to you. <clears throat> and this is teaching us that following on from Surah Al Hadid, Allah is all awwal, akhir, and the dominion belongs to Him. Allah is also ever very close <clears throat> in His hearing and His seeing. <clears throat> so the very first. <clears throat> The very first ayah of Mujadila ends with Inna Allaha Sami'un Basir. And then the next ayah ends with Afoon Ghafoor. And then the next ayah ends with Wallahu Bima Ta'manun Khabir. He is hearing, he is seeing, he is pardoning, he is merciful, he knows all of our affairs. So the theme of this surah, it may seem as if it's regarding a dispute between man and wife. But in actuality, it's talking about the very essence of Tawheed, learning the Asma or the Sifat and actualizing them in your life. And this will bring, and this is why this particular ruling has been mentioned here, and why Allah Jalla wa ala mentions a very stern expiation for those people who do this, that they have to free a slave or fast two consecutive months or feed 60 poor people. These kind, this kind of expiation is only found in very, very serious crimes, including murder. If a person wants to kill another person, they have to fast for two consecutive months. The same ruling has been applied here. Why? Because Allah Jalla wa ala is instilling in us to have the consciousness of Allah. And that day Allah is going to resurrect every single one of us. And He will inform every single one of us about what we did. Allah is going to count Every single action, even if we are negligent about it. Wallahu, wallahu ala kulli shayin shaheed. Allah is ever witnessing over our affairs. So the point here is, is that there are rulings connected to our belief in Asma wa Sifat. This is not good enough for us to say, yes, we believe in Allah and His Rahman and Rahim, and we recite the Quran. And this surah is teaching us that we have to be upright within the laws of Allah and take them seriously. And this is why in the very next page, Alam Tara, don't you see? Allah Ya'lamu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al He knows every single matter in the heavens and the earth. Between each heaven and each earth is 500 years distance of travel. And how many heavens are there and how many earths are there? And Allah knows of every single affair between them. And then Allah says, Ma yakunu min najwa thalatha. There's not a, th- a group of sitting of three people except Allah is the fourth. And there's not a group of five people except Allah is the six. And there is nothing which is inner of yourself, very, very close, a, a thing that you mention to yourself. Wala adna min dhalik. Wala akthar. There is not a gathering that is greater or smaller or something which you mention to yourself, as we've seen in Zahir al-Batin, in Surah al-Hadid. Illa huwa ma'ahum aina ma Except that Allah is with them wherever they may be. Allah's knowledge is absolutely everywhere. Inna Allah bi kulli shayin alim. And this comes as rebuke and a reminder for the people who say they believe. Because Allah Jalla wa ala then goes on to talk about those people who say they believe, but they don't have this concept in their lives. 
Alam tara illa deen. Then Allah says, Alam tara again. Before we see the Alam tara, that you realize that Allah, His name is attributes is with you and He's going to hold you to account. But then Allah says, Don't you ponder and think, Alam tara illa deen nuhu an in najwa, thumma yaudu lima nuhu an. They tell you not to sit with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They tell you not to be his companion, and then they go back as to what they previously prohibited. And in their own private sittings, we tanajona bil ithmi wal udwan. Their own private sittings are full of sin and enmity. Wa ma'asiyat rasul and how they can think about how it's a new way that we can disobey the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And but when you see them, we tanajauk. And they give you a greeting that Allah has not given you a greeting of. And they say, if what we were doing was wrong, why didn't Allah punish us? If we are going against the command of the Prophet wasallam, if we say we believe but we don't actually believe, if we're showing Islam but inside the hiding nifaq, why doesn't Allah punish us? This is their argument, this is their doubt. Allah says, Hasbuhum jahannam yuslonaha for bits and nasi. Their end is the hellfire and what evil place that they are going to reside in. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. Then the address comes back to us, the believers. Ida tanajaytum. If you are going to have a sitting with you and your friends and your family, fala tatanajaw bil ithmi wal udwan. Don't sit and socialize and talk that will bring about sin and enmity. Wa ma'asiyatil rasul. And disobeying the Prophet Sallallahu but have sittings with tanajaw bil birri wa taqwa upon bir, piety and fearing the akhirah. Wa taqullah alladhi ilayhi tuhsharun. Because Allah is the one who is going to account you. He knows about your affairs in the dunya and He's going to bring you to account in the akhirah. How many affairs and how many sittings do we have in our friends and our family are full of ithm, sin, and udwan and creating enmity verbally with one another and in our thoughts with one another and many of these sittings include Ma'asiyat al-Rasul what the Prophet ﷺ came with and we're thinking, we're talking about and we're enjoying stuff that the Prophet ﷺ would not have been pleased with and this was, this is the description of Nifaq this is the description of Nifaq as if it isn't enough as a rebuke that Allah is telling us here and Allah goes on to mention, إِنَّمَا النَّجْوَى مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ Your private sittings are infiltrated by shaitan. He's not going to leave you in your house with your family and your friends without trying to infiltrate. Allah says, مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ لِيَحْزُنَ اللَّهِ لِيَحْزُنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لِيَحْزُنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلَيْسَ بِضَارِهِمْ شَيْنِ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ And what they try, what he tries to do is try and create pessimism. Make people feel sad. The believers feel sad. Why do you, why do you believe? Why do you enjoy the life? Why do you create mischief? And this is why Allah Jalla wa'ala then quickly goes on in the very next ayah to mention the virtue of the people of knowledge. Ya ayu al-ladheena amun wida qeel lakum tafassahu fil majalis fafsahu yafsahi lakum If it is said to you, make room for your brother cooperate upon goodness, then they do this. Those people who have Iman, Allah is going to raise them in rank, and those people who have knowledge will raise them in rank even more. So this clearly shows us that our sittings should be knowledge-based sittings. It should be sittings that should be uh, sittings that we are encouraging one another to do goodness in. And preventing any kind of harm and disobedience to Allah and His Messenger. And Allah Jalla wa ala then goes on to mention about how the munafiqeen are angered with those people who follow the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Allah Jalla wa ala says in Yawm Al-Qiyamah that they will be accounted for what they do and what they say. And their affairs will not benefit them in the slightest. They will come with their children, they will come with their wealth, and they will come on Yom al Qiyamah with every single excuse. But Allah classes them as being Hizbu Shaytan. Inna Hizbu Shaytan humul Khasirun. But then Allah Jalla wa Ala says that those people have Iman and follow the way of the Rasul, they will be successful. Katab Allah la agli banna ana wa rusuli. Allah has decreed that the religion, the Prophet ﷺ, will be successful. And this is 
أُولَٰئِكَ هِزْبُ اللَّهِ أَلَا إِنَّ هِزْبَ اللَّهِ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ This is the party of Allah and they are the successful. طيب. This surah, as we have seen, extensively talking about nifaq. The next surah, so that's the internal enemy of the ummah. The very next surah is talking about an external enemy of the ummah. Surah Al-Hashr. Now, Surah Al-Hashr has a context. After the battle of Uhud, and within the battle of Uhud, there were certain Jewish tribes that took part with Uhud, even though the Prophet ﷺ had treaties with them. And he moved to Medina and he said, we're not going to fight you, you're not going to fight us. If anybody fights you, and we're going to so- cooperate and we have an allegiance with one another. This group of people, Banu Nadir, took part in trying to fight the Prophet ﷺ. So after Uhud, the Prophet ﷺ also realized that these people have proven treacherous to their, to, their, to their covenant. But somebody actually got killed by Banu Nadir. So what the hypocrites did, and like we've said before, the very first, the surah in this juz, the surah that came before it, is talking about the hypocrites and how they try and plot and try and you know, seek disaster for the Prophet ﷺ and the Ummah. What they said is they went to Banu Nadir and they said, Call Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa to your village and we will support you. Now is our chance. He's going to come and see you by himself. He's not going to come with an army. He's, not going, to, he's going to come and see you about this person that has been killed. And we will support you. And if war breaks out and Muhammad gets away, we will be, we will be defending you. But don't worry. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went with Abu Bakr and Umar to Banu Nadir. And he told them that we want, we want to talk about this affair of this person that has been killed. We need a resolution. So they told the Prophet ﷺ to wait at this wall. And we're going to discuss the matter here, but just wait here. And what they plotted is they climbed the wall with the biggest rock that they could find. And they were going to throw it on top of the head of Muhammad ﷺ and this would be the end. Jibreel came down and he told the Prophet sallallahu to move and he told him this is the plot that they are planning get up from this place so the Prophet sallallahu went back to Medina he knew these people are proven treacherous and now within the face of reconciliation they are proven treacherous once again enough so the Prophet sallallahu came back with his army he came back with his army and remember the, the munafiqeen of Medina said before to the people of Al-Nadir if he's coming with his army, we're going to support you guys, not these guys. Not the believers, we're going to be with you. So what Banu Nadir did is they fortressed their village or their city. They made it so that the Muslims couldn't enter. And this is how Allah begins this surah. lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi All glory be to Allah. All praises are for him who is the dominion of the heavens and the earth. Wa huwa azizun hakim. He is the one who took these people out of their lands where they made a fortress. And you didn't think that this fortress could ever come down. This fortress was mighty. How can you bring this fortress? Allah is the one who brought, this, brought it down for you. And they left their homes with fear in their hearts. They ran away. They had a fortress. They had an army. They were promised by people from within Medina that they're going to fight Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You have to remember Medina at that time, after the third year, fourth year of Hijrah, fifth year of Hijrah, it wasn't very, very big. They said, we'll support you. But despite that, in their hearts was fear. And what did they do? Not only that, they left their city destroying everything. They said, if we can't have it, Muhammad's not going to have it. They destroyed their own houses and then they left. And they saying, How many people have fortressed their cities have oppressed the Muslims, but Allah has brought their oppression and their fortress down to the ground with nothing. And had Allah not written before that they are going to exile themselves, Allah would have punished them. Isn't this a sign for us also? That we want certain people to stop their oppression, we want certain justice to happen in the dunya. And if anything, just leave the Muslims alone, go out in exile, but had Allah not written what He has written and what He has pre-decreed, Allah could have destroyed them in the dunya. 
ذلك بأنهم شاقوا الله ورسوله ومن يشاق الله فإن الله شديد القاب Now we have to remember here ومن يشاق Allah is saying anybody who disobeys Allah and his messenger then they have a punishment but who is directed on that first it's the believers so who is the cause of his own downfall is the believers ما قتأتم من لينة أو تركتموها قائما على أصولها فبإذن الله some of the plantations they left upright because they didn't have a chance to destroy it. And some of them they destroyed and they left. All of this was left out of the permission of Allah. And then Allah Jalla wa ala goes on to talk about the resolve that the believers must have. And that they must cooperate with one another. لِلْفُقُرَانِ مُحَاجِرِينَ الَّذِينَ أُخْرِجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ وَأَمْوَالِهِمْ يَبْتَغُونَ فَضْنُ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرِضْوَانَا وَيُنْسِرُونَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولَهِ they left their houses, they left Mecca, they left everything and they were truthful in supporting Prophet وسلم, and those people from the Ansar they love those and they accept those people that come to them and they give them everything even though they need it themselves and then they make dua for one another this isn't just a fairy tale, this isn't just a nice set of incidents of a story. Allah Jalla wa'ala is telling us that the characteristics of the believer is that they support Allah and His Messenger. They're united with one another, they make dua for one another, they cooperate with one another. And they seek to make dhikr and they get better and closer to Allah by learning His names and attributes. That's why this surah ends with كَمَثْلِ الشَّيْطَانِ إِذْ قَالَ الْإِنسَانِ كفر. Shaitan will come to you and he'll tell you to make kufr. But when it comes to the hour of need, in the akhirah, قَالَ إِنِّي بَرِيُّ مِنْكَ I am completely free from you in the akhirah. This is what he will say. Why? It's because these people, their hearts have become hard. This is what Allah Jalla wa Allah is saying here. يَا أَيُّوَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُ اتَّقُوا اللَّهُ وَالْتَنْذُوا النَّفْسُ مَا قُدَّمَتْ لِكَ Look at what's going to happen for you tomorrow in the akhirah. Fear Allah now and prepare for you for you tomorrow. Why? Don't be like those people who forgot Allah, so Allah forgot them. They forgot the names and attributes of Allah, so Allah forgot them. They forgot the Tawheed of Allah, so Allah forgot them. What happened to them? What happened to them without the base of the Aqeedah? They became Fusaq. They became sinful. They became innovative. They became negligent. They became weak in their Iman. This is what Allah then says. The people of Jannah and the people of Naar are not the same. The people of Jannah or those people who are firm in their names and attributes and Tawheed of Allah. That's why the surah ends with, هو الله لا إله إلا هو عالم غيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم Name after name after attribute after attribute. هو الخالق له الأسماء والحسنى And those people who understand this, يسبه له ما في السماوات والأرض Everything between the heavens and the earth, the angels, the, the malaika, the, the animals, the plants, the stars, the moons, and all of these things that we've seen in the surahs just before, they make tasbih of Allah because they realize His oneness and they realize His names and His attributes. This is Surah Hashr. Surah Hashr is talking about the enemy from within as well as the enemy from without or outside. Then we have the next surah which is Surah Mumtahina, which is the surah of tests. And Imam Suyuti is saying here, after we've had Mujadila, instilling Iman in names and attributes of Allah and warning against Nifaq, then we've had Hashar talking about the external enemy. Now we have Mumtahina again talking about an external enemy. But this external enemy doesn't want peace with you, not from the outset. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, la tattakhidhu aduwi wa aduwakum. They are your enemies and they are my enemies, Allah Jalla wa Ala. They don't want peace with you. They don't want to tolerate your message. They don't want any kind of treaty. They don't want any kind of mutual agreement. They just want enmity. And Allah Jalla wa Ala goes on to mention this surah that some of the believers will love them even though that they hate them as in they hate the believers back and if they had the chance they would spite you and the day of judgment this kind of connection this kind of affiliation with one another will not help you in the slightest Allah is going to talk about every single affair on the day of judgment and Imam Suyuti is saying here that this surah is foretelling that the Quraysh are going to go against the pact that you've made in Hudaybiyah. I'm going to go against it. So remain firm. And how does he remain firm? Here we have 
the example of Ibrahim, the father of Tawheed, and the grandfather of the Prophet ﷺ. You have the best example of Ibrahim. Why? Because he said to his people, the people who didn't want to, tolerance, they didn't want to create harmony, he said to them, Inni bari I am free from you. And I have have enmity with you for the sake of Allah because of your injustice, because of your tyranny. And Allah Jalla wa ala goes on to talk about Surah Mumtahina and He gives us detail of giving bay'ah to only those people who have Iman, Tawheed and want to create this uprightness and allegiance to what is just. This is why the very next Surah, we have Surah Saf, the Surah of unity, the Surah of being firm in your role. Allah begins this surah by making tasbih of him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sabbaha lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi lard. You in your unity, you in your groups, you in your iman, you in your following the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Praise Allah. Remain firm. And don't get infiltrated by false beliefs like those people who came before you. وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَ لِكَوْمِ يَا قَوْمِ لِمَا تُؤْذُونَنِي وَقَدْ تَعْلَمُونَ أَنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ why are you going against my comb? Why are you going, my, he's saying to his nation, why are you going against my word when you know I'm a messenger to you? When they turned away, Allah turned away from them. Isn't this a, a sign for us, the Ummah? This is Musa. Isa, where it's called Isa ibn Maryam. Ya Bani Israel. The people that he came to. Inni Rasulullah alaykum. I am also a messenger to you and I am coming to affirm what you already have in the Torah. And I am about to tell you that there is going to be another messenger that is going to come after me and his name is Ahmed. And when he said this, when he came with clear proof, they said to Isa, هذا سحر مبين. This is how unity will become infiltrated and this is how your unity will be lost. And this is proof also in the Surah of Suyuti saying, Rahimahullah, that the, the command of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam being, being united, this will remain until Yawm Al-Qiyam. The, ummas, the other Ummahs didn't have that. Musa didn't have that, Isa didn't have that. This Surah, Surah Saf, is going to be recited in Yawm al And this is proof for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that your Ummah will remain upright, at least a party from them, until Yawm al How can we remain upright? We love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We learn about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We support the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We follow his practice and we don't want to disappoint him in his sunnah and disappoint him on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Because yes, there are going to be certain people that he will be disappointed with. He will class them as being the Ummah and he will tell them, come and drink from my hole and they will be rejected. This is Iman and unity. The next surah we have Jumu'ah, unity in your practices, active or worship. Acts of worship. Again, Allah begins. If you have that unity, if you don't have that unity, Allah is praised. Allah is perfect. Allah is free from any kind of imperfection in the heavens and the earth. Yusabbahu lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard. Al-Malik al-Quddus al-Aziz al-Hakim. Now in this surah, Allah Jalla wa Ala gives us the example of the party that became disunited and in their behavior and the acts of worship also became disunited. And when the truth came to them, they rejected it. So why is Allah talking about a group from the Yahud in Surah Jum'ah? مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ هُمِ لِلْتَّوْرَاتِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَحْمِلُهَا كَمَثِلِ الْهِمَا Because Allah is telling us here that they have distorted the message on purpose and they've created division and disunity on purpose. وَاللَّهُ لَا يَحْنُكُمُ الظَّالِمِينَ We've seen this before with Fasqeen. Allah Jalla wa Allah says in a different surah, ظَالِمِينَ they don't want to accept the laws of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Surah Al-Jumu'ah ends by telling us to be upright in our acts of worship and salah. Leave the dunya. Don't become distracted. Become firm and be united. And don't let the dunya make you deviated. Imam Suyuti also said, that having unity in Iman and being one Saf and having unity in Salat and being one Saf requires us to have one heart and one unity and it also reminds us that both of these acts of worship actually entail congregation. 
the biggest pillars of Islam entail congregation and entail for us to be united with one another. And this is why the very next surah says that there are going to be people within our saf who are going to try to break that. Surah Munafiqun. إِذَا جَاءَ المنافقون إِذَا جَاءَكُ المنافقون قَالُوا نَشْحَدُ إِنَّكَ لَرَسُولُ اللَّهُ we, They will come to you and say, yeah, you are the Messenger of Allah, we bear witness. Allah bears witness that they are not believers. And Allah bears witness that they are the munafiqeen. وَإِذَا رَأَيْتُهُمْ تُعْجِبُكَ أَجْسَامُ When you see them, you think that this is a nice man. You think he's an upright man. وَإِن يَقُولُوا تَسْمَعْ لِكَوْلِ When he speaks, you will listen. But besides that, they always are in the state of being, thinking that they are going to be found out. These people, they know that I'm a munafiq, and they are constantly in the state of fear. What are some of their traits? When it's told to make istighfar, they will not make istighfar. When it's told them to support Allah and His message and His religion, they will not do so. And they will always try and seek to remove the authority of Islam with their own authority. And Allah Jalla wa Ala also says, Munafiqeen, Munafiqeen twice in this surah. وَلَكِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ They don't have any intellect, they don't have any fiqh, they don't have any understanding. And the next ayah, وَلَكِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ They don't have any understanding, they don't have any, they don't have any intellect. This is clearly telling us that the biggest way that you can remove nifaq, you can create unity, you can be upright upon iman and righteous actions, is only through, through ilm. When ilm is lost, nifaq becomes apparent. And this is the series of the surahs that we've seen here now. We're talking about inside treaties, internal treaties with iman, and external treaties with other people. And this is what this ummah is going to go through. It's going to go through people trying to infiltrate our resolve. Religious faith from outside, and people claiming to be Muslims from inside. And... This surah also, Imam Suyuti says something which is truly amazing. Allah have mercy on him on this. He says, Surah Munafiqun highlights the biggest challenge for the Prophet ﷺ. His challenge wasn't Ahlul Kitab, it wasn't the Quraysh, it wasn't anything except the Munafiqun from the people within him. They harmed him the most. They said things about his wife, they tried to physically harm him, they tried to physically remove him, etc. The very next surah is Surah Taqabun. And Taqabun means mutual loss. On the day of judgment, there is going to be mutual loss. If somebody wronged you, you will claim that wronging back. This is affirming for the Prophet ﷺ that victory is going to be for you. And on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, you are going to have the upper hand. But he also says that the very last ayah here, وَلَنْ يُؤَخِرُ اللَّهُ نَفْسٍ إِذَا جَاءَ أَجِلُهَا when your time is appointed to die, you cannot delay it. Wallahu khabirun bima ta'amalun. And Allah knows all about, about your affairs. Imam Suyuti said, Surah Munafiqun, this is the very last ayah of Surah Munafiqun. And Surah, Surah Munafiqun is the 63rd chapter of the Quran. Let's think about that. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was 63 when he passed away. And the very last ayah of the 63rd chapter of the Quran you cannot delay death, not even for one moment. And the very next surah, the biggest loss for this ummah, is the passing of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, at-taghab, mutual loss. Now Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came, he went through his struggles, he, he passed away and the ummah went through distraught. But despite all of this, Allah is praising the heavens and the earth. يُسَبِّهُ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ لَهُ الْمُلْكُ وَلَهُ الْحَمْدُ وَهُوَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ Surah Taqabun is teaching us that the biggest form of nifaq will not benefit these people. And what is the biggest form of nifaq? Surah Al-Munafiqun ends with this. يَا أَيُّوَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تُلْهِكُمْ أَمْوَالِكُمْ وَلَا أُولَادِكُمْ وَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Don't let the dunya, the life, your children, distract you from the remembrance and the akhir with Allah. Surah Taqabun is teaching us that your wealth your children, your families will not benefit you on the Day of Judgment. The Munafiks, the people who don't believe in Yom Al-Akhir, they say that they will, we will not be resurrected. Allah says, Qul bala, without any doubt. 
وربي لا تبأثن ثم لا تنبأن بما عملتم وذلك على الله يسير. You will be informed, you will be resurrected, and there will be recompense. يوم يجمعكم ليوم الجمع. Every single one of us will be gathered on that day. ذلك يوم التغابن. That is the day of mutual loss. If I took something from you, you will gain it back from me. Are we talking about wealth? We're talking about honor. We're talking about our tongues. We're talking about our actions. We're talking about our taqwa with one another. And this is what Surah Taqabun is teaching us. And then Surah Taqabun is also teaching us, مَا أَصَابِ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ Any affliction that you have in the dunya is from the permission of Allah. But those people who have iman and are guided, then Allah will make the affairs upright. In the dunya and the akhirah. وَأَتِيُوا اللَّهُ وَأَتِيُوا الرَّسُولُ فَإِن تَوَلَّيْتُمْ If you turn away from this فَإِنَّمَا عَلَىٰ رَسُولٍ بَلَاغُ مُبِينَ The message has been made clear for you. If there is any loss for you in the day of judgment, or if there is any loss for you in the dunya, it's only because of what you've done yourself. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِنَّ مِنْ أَزْوَاجِكُمْ وَأَوْلَادِكُمْ وَأَدُوْنْ لَكُمْ فَاحْذَرُوهُمْ They are a test for you. And don't let that test make you fail, like it happened to the munafiqeen in the surah before. وَإِن تَعْفُوا وَتَسْفَهُوا وَتَغْفِرُوا If you are kind to them, if you overlook their mistakes, if you pardon them, if you are nice to them, then Allah will be غَفُورُ رَحِيمُ to you. إِنَّمَا أَنْوَالُكُمْ وَأَوْلَادُكُمْ فِتْنَةِ It's in trust upon you. وَاللَّهُ إِنْدَهُ أَجْرٌ عَذِيمٌ If you fulfill that trust on the day of mutual loss, you will be safe. So fear Allah as much as you can and give Allah a goodly loan and Allah will multiply it for you. عالم الغيب والشهادة. How many loans have you given to Allah? How many sins have you made to Allah? And we don't know about it. Allah knows the affairs of the seen and unseen. And He is Aziz al Hakim. The next surah, Surah Al Talaq. And before we go into Talaq, we have Imam Suyuti also saying that Munafiqun and Al Tabaqabun both end with success in the Akhirah. By making dhikr of Allah in the dunya. And the Taghabun also mentions all the six pillars of Islam, which is very rare to find in a very small surah. And Surah Taghabun also mentions over 10 names and attributes of Allah, which is again very rare to find in a very small surah. If you want success in the Akhirah, all of these surahs have been put together not because of coincidence, my brothers and sisters. Mumtahina, and then we've had Hashar, and all of them are talking about Asma and Sifat, talking about being upright. Talking about aqeedah, talking about actions, warning against nifaq, warning against indulgence in the dunya and letting our families and our, and our perception of life and our wealth deceive us. Surah At-Talaq, and Surah At-Talaq carries on from the message of Munafiqoon, is that your wealth and your children and your wives are a test for you. And the context of this we don't have time to discuss, but the Prophet wasallam was instructed here that if you're going to make talaq, then you do it in the correct manner. Because it could be that you want to make talaq of one of your wives because they are distracting you from that lofty purpose of the akhir. So Allah Jalla wa Ala also tells us that if you are living with them, be with them nicely. Spend with them. Don't create hardships in your family lives. Create social stability with one another. And taqwa is repeated more than once here. And Imam Suyuti said taqwa is repeating twice. Allah says about the taqwa that those people who may yaj'allahu min amri yusra in a positive sense. All your affairs will be easy. And then also in a negative sense, wa may yukaffir anhu sayyati. He will eradicate all your sins. You want ease in your life, you want ease with your family, you want ease with your children, surah talaq. Be responsible, be upright, be kind with one another, have taqwa with one another, and know that you will be tested but instill the names and attributes and the consciousness of Allah and you will be successful. The last surah of this juz is Surah Tahrim. And this is exactly what happened following on from Talaq. There was an issue with the Prophet ﷺ, with some of his wives. And the Prophet ﷺ swore an oath. But Allah rebuked him. Ya ayyuhan nabi, in the nicest way. Allah was addressing the Prophet ﷺ. He didn't say, Ya Muhammad. He didn't say, Ya, ya ayyuhan nabi. Lima tuharim Allah. Look. Why are you making something that Allah has made halal for you? Why are you making it haram? Why are you doing it to please your wives? Why are you doing it to please your wives? Allah is Ghafoor Rahim. 
And the point in this surah Imam Suti is saying here is that we don't expose one another's faults. We keep our secrets. We seek to reconcile. And besides all of this, it could be, and it's very, very possible, that in one household you have somebody who is upright or maybe an imam of tawheed and taqwa, but his wife is completely the opposite. But it could also be that this woman, she is absolutely pious and guaranteed a house in Jannah, but her husband is the most tyrannical person that history has ever seen before. What's the cause? What's the solution? Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, ku anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. Take this very, very seriously. Save yourself and your family from the hellfire. How can we do this? Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu. In the nicest way, Allah is addressing me and you. Say la ilaha illallah. We say we're proud to say it. Allah is addressing you then. Accept it. Tubu ilallahi tawbatan nasuha. You want success in the dunya, in the akhirah, go back to Allah with your mistakes and go back to Allah seeking assistance to do more good. Asa rabbukum an yukafir ankum sayyat. It could be that Allah will forgive you of your sins in the dunya, in the akhirah, and in the akhirah he'll give you jannah and tajri. And he will make you with the Prophet ﷺ on a day that he has promised that he will not humiliate the Prophet. ﷺ. Allah then ends with a parable. Nuh and Lut, two upright Nabis that we have seen throughout the surah, throughout the whole Quran, their wives disbelieved in them. They're in Jannah, highest, left, loftiest status in Jannah, the wives will be in hellfire. Asiya has a house guaranteed for her in Jannah, and she's one of the one of the women that have attained perfection throughout history. And her husband was Firaun. Some of the Mufassirun said, This man, nobody ever said anything good about this person. Not one good thing was said about Fir'aun. But Asiya was the complete opposite in the same house. Allah Jalla wa is addressing us here, my brothers and sisters. How seriously are we taking ourselves, our wives, our families, our mothers, our relationship? And how seriously are we going back to Allah and turning to Him in repentance and learning His names and attributes and making that affect our lives? I ask Allah to combine us with the Prophet ﷺ in the dunya and the akhirah so that we can follow his sunnah in the dunya and we can be with him in, in, in person in the akhirah.